Well, welcome back to Rail Stuff. It's been a little while. Obviously, you've had the um, video of a, a weekend in the life of a model railway trader, and thank you for the, the nice feedback I've had on that. That's, um, uh, that was really worth doing. Um, back to the arches this week, um, and right now, some progress has been made since last time you saw it, which was quite a while ago, but Hey, it's been summer, it's been busy, but uh, we are back to the arches and you can see that the, the actual arches themselves are, are pretty much finished on the external side of things. Still got some lighting to go uh, on the inside, um, but uh, you know, pretty happy with the, with the weathering on, on the front. Um, you know, maybe if anything it is slightly overdone, but um, I'm, I'm fairly happy with it, um, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, the, the lighting inside um, will just um, give it a nice finishing touch um, but it's not priority at this stage. You might notice some changes over the, the front portion uh, as well. Um, number one, there's, there's a loco in place. It's not a functioning loco it's, um, uh, and actually it's, it's got a bit of a weird paint job at the minute. It's one that, that uh, I had a go at painting up myself. It was literally uh, um, a loco that I bought for I think ten pounds from a toy and train fair um, because it because it's a non-running um, one, but that's perfect for for a diorama like this. So I've given it a very basic black um, paint job at the minute. The idea is it's going to have some rail stuff logos uh, on it at some point, and then it's going to get weathered up. Um, but it's just pretty basic, um, just as a, a nice sort of feature on on the diorama. Let's put that to one side. You've seen the um, the loco shed before. Uh, nothing has changed with that. But what you will notice is that the ground uh, has some texture and, and colour on it now. So before it was just a, a, a light uh, acrylic paint of, uh, of sort of burnt umber. Um, it's now actually got some, it's just basic Javis earth sprinkle um, or scatter which is it does the job for what I'm looking for it's a very base layer it's not going to be the layer that you see at the end uh, there'll be patches of grass there'll be patches of dirt there'll be all kinds of stuff going on over the top and it will be blended in um, but it does give a just a, a very general base coat and it was very simple I just pasted on some PVA, sprinkled on the Javis Earth uh, and left it to dry, tipped off the excess, that was it and, and that's what I've been left with. Um, in terms of the, the road area itself, uh, I think since last time I saw you I made it slightly darker, it was, um, it was just a little bit, the colour wasn't quite right for me so I've just made it slightly darker. Um, I never can seem to quite get happy with the colour of um, asphalt tarmac roads um, because when you look at them in real life they're actually really light grey in colour but you paint them light grey on here and they don't look right so um, so I don't know but uh, I'll leave it at that for now because that's going to get quite a lot of um, uh, weathering and detail over the top and that's kind of where I wanted to start with this video because I feel like before I can tackle detail in this area I just need to get that roadway right um, whilst it's still easy to access. So I think that the first things first uh, it, it needs some markings on it. Um, markings are, are tricky to get right as well. Um, freehand painting them is in my opinion not an option unless you are incredibly steady handed um, and very good with a very fine tip paintbrush uh, I'm not I've got big fat sausage fingers so I'm absolutely useless at that kind of thing um, another option is the kind of self adhesive stuff I just think it looks too fake and plasticky and too shiny and yes you can weather it down and blend it in but it still just doesn't quite look right to me um, so I've got a couple things that, that I'm going to dig out first one is I went to Hobbycraft the other day and I picked up these 
So these are um, good old paint pens or paint markers. You've probably seen them before, uh, but I got them in the white and the, the yellow color. These are the fine versions. Um, the thick ones, in my opinion, are too thick uh, for this kind of job. Maybe if you're doing O gauge, great. Um, but So I've got those in the white and yellow. Um, and then somewhere in and amongst my pile of stuff, I do have uh, some templates that uh, they're on like a clear plastic cutout templates. And I think I got them from Scale Model Scenery quite a few years ago uh, now. Um, but they've got all kinds of different road markings that you can then just lay it down and, and either paint over the top or, or you know, marker over the top um, to do your road markings. So that's what we're going to give a go. So I'm going to go find those templates and then let's have a go at marking the road. Um, I haven't got all of them out because I don't need all of them but I've uh, got some of the basics. So basic road markings, uh, double yellow lines, no parking markers, uh, there's a keep clear sign on that one that I'll probably end up using. Um, there's a few other bit. I mean there's loads of stuff in, in the pack um, but I don't need all of it. Um, so there's a, there's a couple of things I need to do first of all. One of them is I need to bring the arches back over. Just put those down there. Just put the arches in place. Uh, one of the things that we're going to want to do is probably put a, a keep clear in front of this door. Um, and then I'm just trying to work out what to do with the double yellow lines. I mean, it's a very narrow street, this one. So it's possible that, that you wouldn't have parking anywhere uh, down it um, but I'm not sure whether it's one of those kind of roads where they do the double yellow lines and things I mean they probably would if there's the a railway sort of uh, um, depot next to it so maybe I'll run some double yellow lines along this side and then just like a keep clear in the middle or, or something like that but one of the things that, that is absolutely critical is to is to test it first and make sure you're happy. So I've got some little bits of wood here and I just want to, to try it out with these markers and, and just check that these are the right things and the, the right way of doing it. Um, so let's have a go I guess. That is the one thing I sort of remember from using them in the past, is that if you don't quite get it spot on, then they can look a bit scruffy. I don't know how well you can see that on there. Um, let's just try the, the keep clear one on here, see if that's any easier. I mean, it's, it's neat enough, whether it's quite right or not, I'm not sure. So there is, there is actually a bit of a clue on, on the marks left on these of how I've used them in the past, where I've used uh, sponges dipped in paint, like to dip over the, the, the top. Because um, you don't necessarily need to, to have 
your loads of paint on it and, and maybe you just want to you know dip the the paint on so maybe I'll try one of these sponge brushes but this is yeah you know, this is why you try these things first right um, because sometimes it's it's not going to be quite right and you need to adjust how you're doing it now I've got to hope I've got the right kind of paint um, which I know I've got white acrylic just a basic cheap acrylic paint um, I might actually want to just add a touch of thinner to that not much just a couple of drops and then let me grab a mixer Had a bit of a tidy up and a sort out of the modelling area and it is making it a bit easier. Everything's to hand at the moment. Don't know how long that will last though. I am notoriously messy both as a modeller and in general life. Um, so we're going to try the keep clear one again. Just going to dab on there not too much so and then over the top pull it off mm. While it's possibly not as as neat as the writing of the top one, it somehow looks a bit more realistic. So I think I'm going to go with the sponge dabbing. In fact, yes, yes I am. So... that there and maybe because we just saw it move so easily there I'm going to use a bit of low tack masking tape just to hold it in place I mean obviously I'm, I'm going to hold it with my fingers anyway but it's just good to have that little bit of extra protection there. So let's give this a go. Maybe scraping off the, the foam a little bit more this time. well you can see that there. Let me see if I can zoom in. It's not perfect but it gives the effect. Now the double yellow lines are a bit strange because, and I understand why it's the 
yeah, the cutting out of the, the material. But they've got these little lines that hold the, the plastic together. Um, which does mean that you end up with some little gaps in your double yellow lines. But as they say, worst things have happened at sea. And yeah, maybe I can patch those in afterwards if I'm feeling particularly brave one day. Uh, now for this, I have got a little bit of um, this yellow here, which is part of the Rail Centre uh, British Locomotive set, if I remember correctly. And this probably doesn't need thinning down compared to that big thick acrylic. So I've got that much on there. Feeling this is either going to be brilliant or terrible. It's pretty terrible. <laughs> that hasn't really worked. Actually, I'm, I'm not sure that terrible is is quite right. I mean, the thing the thing is, it, it looks like a. Uh, uh, a pretty rubbishy faded double yellow line and actually that's, that's that's kind of probably more accurate for this kind of location isn't it so yeah, maybe I'm just being a little bit over critical there so let's have a go over here as well maybe we want to just on a way of holding it down on that side as well. So I think these things, if you're doing this on completely flat plastic card or something like that, the ideal. The way you've got a like a textured road surface like like I have there, then it's not quite perfect. I've just added a little bit of thinner to the paint this time. Just because I'm applying it with the sponge Now, the thinner made it a heck of a lot easier to apply, but it may have been too runny and sort of run into itself underneath the, the plastic. Yeah, that's awful. Okay, so that has gone completely wrong. So don't thin paints that are already thin. I hope you didn't come to this channel for a how-to. This is very much a 
learn as I make mistakes. What not to do with Adam from Rail Stuff? Has also taken a little bit of the the road paint colour <laughs> off as well, so So there is one other thing I want to try. And look, it may be possible that I have to repaint over all of this and uh, and try again. But that's fine. The other thing I wanted to try is do I just use one of these marker pens with a ruler? I know it's exactly what I said I wouldn't be doing. But given how things are going, surely it's worth a try. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? That is immediately better. Getting things in the right place for the second line. Felt like it might have been difficult, but actually that's okay. So basically scrap everything that I've talked about for the last 10 minutes and go back to what I said right at the very beginning, paint pens. It's a million times better, a million times better. So I shall put my paint to one side and instead, and my little templates, which are a great idea, but tricky, I'll put those to one side and I'll crack on with the ruler, shall I?
And there we are, we have double li uh, yellow lines down one side. See, as simple as that. Guess I'll do the rest. Now one other thing I did want to add was an arrow and I think to get this right I would struggle to do it without the, um, the template. So I'm going to have to go back to it but I'm going this time to use the pen with the template. So it's a very narrow street so it's clearly going to be one way. So I'll just tape it down there. Okay, so it's a little bit scrappy, but you can see the arrow. But some of that will just be a case of, uh, like, even scalpel blade or something like that to just um, get the the scrappier edges off. Or even if I've got a very fine tip brush, and maybe a dab of thinners then what I could do is wipe it off it's, it's not going to be perfect doing it that way though So I think we probably will end up with a little scalpel blade on there or something like that. Um, I've got this kind of little blade here. Let's just try. There we go. That's more like it. There we go. Now the keep clear marking up the road is isn't great. Um, but that's gonna end up quite faded. That's the way that we'll we'll blend that in is by, by fading it down. Now, of course, you know, you might then be thinking, well, okay, how do you sort of fade this down and uh, make it look a bit more weathered? Well, for me, it is some good old-fashioned uh, weathering powders. Um, so I've got a black soil here, which I tend to use quite a lot because it's just dirty. Um, and dirty sort of the right approach check that that's dry it is dry so um, we'll just start to we'll brush some of that right down the the side anyway where the arches will meet the, the road because obviously there's always dirt collecting the side of roads anyway if it looks a bit thick from where you are right now um, then don't worry because that's where the 
the front of the, the arches will sit. So it will sit over some of that. And then you see when there's a little bit less pigment, just brush some of that over the, the lines just to fade them a little bit. Same over here, just starting to blend in the, the sides of the road. Just by chucking some dirt on there to start off with. We'll particularly make sure we cover up that bit where the ruler marks joined. some of that out onto the road area. Some places you'll end up getting a bit more on than you would in others and, and that's fine as well. So we've got quite a dirty road, but that's what I wanted. So if I now turn this back round and put the arches back in place, we'll see what it looks like with that. And there'll probably be a uh, standby, I'm about to use a Richard Watson term here, there'll probably a bit, be a bit more fettling on this. It's a good word Richard and I'm, I'm going to keep stealing it. There probably will be some more fettling on this but um, as a starting point um, I'm fairly pleased with that. We've got a dirty road with some road markings on it. Um, there is some there that is probably a little bit especially because it's by that door that's a bit gaudy um, and actually I maybe want to just especially where that door is just um, especially with it being a one-way road I mean traffic is going to come out of there and always go in one direction so let's get a little bit of So that's an example of what I mean by fettling. There's going to be plenty of that. Look, I've spilled some on there. Shame. 
left that's a bit of dirt anyway so it's fine um, but uh, hopefully what you've seen there is um, several attempts some good some bad uh, at doing some road markings where we've ended up I'm I'm fairly okay with and then sort of dirty up the road surface and over the the road markings as well um, so that is probably where we're going to stop for um, for this week's video um, my next thing to tackle is is going to be to start on this area here I will start um, by adding some dirt across that back area there I'm then going to be putting up the fence and sort of weathering that into place um, and adding some bush and, uh, and foliage around that as well want that to be quite overgrown uh, there'll then be some more general dirt patches maybe a couple of puddly patches um, or a bit of mud for example um, the dirt I'm probably going to use some good old tile grout for that and a bit of weathering powder um, and then we're just generally going to play around with a uh, little bit of static grass here and there just just patches and just general make it look rough and ready that's the idea um, and that's what we're going to work on uh, next time around uh, so come back when we revisit the arches once again and we continue to finally put this diorama together this is the diorama that I wanted to have done in February of this year it's now the end of August but there you go such is life so that's where we're up to thanks for watching uh, and don't forget you can always do your shopping at rail-stuff.com speak to you soon